From Fox 8 Sports, this is the Overtime Podcast. From the Fox 8 Studios in New Orleans, this is the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. I am your host, Sean Fazan, riding shotgun as he does each and every podcast. Is Andre Johnson. Junior. Do not forget the junior. It's very important to remember the JR at the end of the name. Before we get into today's content, be sure to like, share, rate, and review if you are watching us on YouTube Hit that subscribe button. Get the bell notification for when we drop that fire content. And thank you once again for finding us on the Gulf Coast Sports and Entertainment Network. We've been on it for a couple of weeks now. We enjoyed the response. We are glad you have found us here. Today, speaking of fire content, we got a lot to talk about. One big thing to talk about, uh, and it's I'll just leave with a number. Number 41, Alvin Kamara. The contract situation has been resolved. Before I get into that, though, how you feeling on this hump day? I'm feeling good. You know, we have a lot of football to talk about today, but we're it's, recording this on a Wednesday. It's, 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 the Pelicans tip off their season mm. as well. So now we're at the point where we got football, we got basketball every other night. This is the best part of the sports calendar. And in me. case you haven't figured it out, Fox 8 is very invested oh, in the Pelicans yeah. this season. I'll just leave it at that. All right, big picture today. You know we had to go with. It's got to be Alvin Kamara signs that extension on Tuesday evening. We get the news about 6.30, and he spoke today. Um, and that's where we're going to go with the big picture. Right, the Saints signing Alvin Kamara to an extension. Two years, $24.5 million. Alvin Kamara, obviously, and the Saints had a whole thing during, uh, during the offseason. Mm-hmm. He left the last day of mandatory minicamp. There was a lot of drama. Booked it right out of there. Yeah, right, <laughs> right past all the Saints yeah. media and everything. Dennis Allen saying, we don't know where AK went. Mm-hmm. All the drama leading up to training camp. Will AK be in California? Yada, yada, yada. He was there day one. He showed up for every training camp practice. He showed up for every game. He's been their best offensive player this season, and it hasn't been that close. The Saints rewarding him with a two-year extension. But, Sean, was that the right move for the Saints? All right. You know we got has a lot to say about this because we spent a lot of time talking about this oh, yeah. throughout the off season and leading up to what um, eventually became the conclusion, which is an extension. First off, let's get Alvin's thoughts on the matter of staying with the Saints and staying in the city of New Orleans. This city's been loyal to me. Uh, this organization has been loyal to me. Um, I don't feel like I would get this same feeling that I get putting on the floor to lead anywhere else. So I think it, it was just important for me, and I. I, I Keep saying it, and you know you say it, and then people are like, no, he's lying, he's lying, and I'm like, <laughs> like I'm for real. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie about that. You know, if if it was if it was the other way around, then nobody would hear anything, and it would just happen, right? So, um, I think it, it was it was really important for me to just uh, you know stay buckled down here, and you know figure it out whenever it got figured out, and you know yesterday was the day. Um, I think it's it's just special. It's just special here. I don't think I think I would lose my flame if I if I went somewhere else. Honestly, like, and I, and I was talking to my mom about it, and she was like, "Yeah, just stay." You know, my mom don't really know too much about football. She's just like, "Yeah, it's, it's easy." She's she's looking at convenience, but I'm really looking at the bigger picture and just understanding that, you know, for my legacy and and for you know for me personally as it, my my mind and just body everything, I just feel like this is the place for me. Okay, so look, Alvin Kamara clearly said all the right things on the signing, the connection with the organization, the connection with the city. Uh, the city's going to love that. The fan base is going to love that. And I had no doubt that was sincere. Alvin is a pretty sincere guy, pretty genuine guy. But as for the matter at hand, the Saints signing Alvin Kamara to a contract extension. Here are my thoughts on the matter. Number one, this is all about 2025. All about 2025. Do not pay any attention to 2026. And have the Saints seen enough from Alvin Kamara in 2024 to believe he still has enough to be productive in 2025? We got our answer. The answer is an emphatic yes. AK said he wanted to retire here, and he meant it. Now he will. Awesome. Awesome. And I mean that sincerely. Nice, good vibes for a night, for a couple days, a week, whatever the case may be. Awesome. Once again, great. He was in a great mood at his press conference today. And why wouldn't he be? He just got paid. He just got paid. Again, awesome. And everyone on social media, Saints Twitter, Saints social media fans, they loved it. They loved his words because if there's one thing a New Orleanian likes and a Saints fan loves, it's the appreciation of the people in the city of New Orleans from one of their favorite athletes. They love it. There's no doubt about that. 
So that's a feel-good story for the for the fans, for Alvin, the organization. And look, that is awesome. Like I said, I mean that sincerely. In fact, if you go back to some of those pods we were talking about a few months back on this, one of the things we said was the best way and really the only way for AK to truly get the extension that he wanted was getting back on the field and show he still got it. And I think you could say he has shown he still got it, not just for this year, but give enough to give enough to the Saints to wait there where they feel comfortable in projecting he still got it for next year too. Clearly, he's done enough. Clearly, he has, and like I said, that is great. But here's the thing: I'm not here to throw, and I'm not going to throw like rose petals over this move and shower the organization with an album with just. Un, you know, unbiased praise or just un, you know, just praise everywhere. I'm not going to overly criticize the move either. It's not a definitively bad situation or bad decision on its own. I mean, life without AK, especially if you think about it this year, is pretty difficult to fathom. Nor am I going to like overreact to how AK handled it because he's getting a lot of praise for that. And I think he deserves a little bit, but I'm not going to overdo it. Kamara was a football player, and he was a football player under contract and decided to show up and do what he is obligated to do, which is play football, regardless of how many years left you have on your contract. Yes, absolutely, it was a risk. We found out today he also had a broken hand and suffered some broken ribs. Uh, he broke the hand in uh, in Kansas City. I think we knew about the rib situation, but the broken hand was fairly new information that he revealed to us. But don't tell me there wasn't a risk. Just ask Paulson Adebo about risk. Yep. But it was a risk AK took while making $12 million this year. Not pennies on the dial, dollar, a top five paid, top five compensated running back in 2024. So, yes, he showed up, and he showed up when some other players wouldn't, but he was still making a lot. Adebo, by comparison, making 3.3 in base salary this year. Really, for the Saints, though, they only had two choices for 2025, where they were already $80 million over the cap projection. We know that. And they're always looking ahead. You know that. Uh, it was either let him walk and just take that that unguaranteed uh, salary that he had and, and get the cap space of $19 million or so there or extend him and create $18.5, $19 million, whatever it was, uh, by extending him. Have not seen the fine print. Clearly, we know what they, they decided, decided to extend it, but I haven't seen the fine print on the actual contract details yet, but he had an unguaranteed $22.4 million base salary on the books, already on the books, and $2 million in bonuses for next year, sure, sure. sounds like to me they just guaranteed that money and dropped AK's base salary down to likely the league minimum in 2025 and 2026 and made the, the difference in that from 22.4 to like 1.2, whatever it is, made the difference uh, a signing bonus where you're guaranteed money and, of course, you spread it out over the remaining years of the contract. I hate talking this without showing you a map or a graphic of this, but it's standard operating procedure. I can't... Um, by the way, that, that contract had two voidable years already tacked onto it. So, again, I can't confirm this yet because I haven't seen the actual numbers, but given past contracts, that's likely what happened. And given the fact that it was reported they they created $18 million, $18 million in space with this extension, that's likely what happened because of the what he was already on the books for in 2022. And now you just spread it out uh, over a couple years. But that's what it looks like on the surface. But... Here's the reality, and we can't overlook this. I know you are happy right now, and I know he's one of your favorite players. I know Alvin's happy, and the Saints are happy, and everyone's happy right now. But we cannot overlook and simply bypass the bottom line aspect here. And the fact is, this is risky. This is a risky move. Detach emotion from player and city for a second. They just extended a running back who will turn 30 years old next year. That in a singular vacuum, in a singular instance, would be fine because exceptions are always made and exceptions always happen and outliers always happen. But this team has a serious issue with age right now. We're, we're witnessing the impact of that right in front of our faces over the last five games of the season. Getting old on the back end and not enough young players coming through on the underneath. But here they are extending a very veteran player at a brutal position. I just said, broken hand, broken ribs. It's a wonder he hasn't missed a game yet. Yeah. If they do get younger, which they absolutely have to do, they will have to do it in other areas, which, of course, is certainly possible. But there's also this. Any thought of completely unplugging? Likely off the table. At least in the total, full-blown rebuild sense which I think probably 
once you get past the emotion, it's probably going to frustrate some Saints fans, depending on how the season goes. So here we are. Away the Saints go. A superstar is thrilled, um, and it's going to get some positive headlines. And everyone loves when players get paid. But time will tell if this was the correct move on another example of them committing to an older player who could be, not right now, but who could very soon be past his prime. What say you? I say that there are two angles that you can look at this from, and you cannot say one without the other. At least I won't. Okay. The first angle being Alvin Kamara earned this deal. Absolutely. Alvin Kamara, and it's kind of gotten lost in the season. Alvin Kamara is about 200 yards away from becoming the Saints' all-time leading rusher. Nice. Passing up Mark Ingram. Alvin Kamara, you can make a pretty solid argument. He is the greatest running back in New Orleans Saints history. Yep. Alvin Kamara is on the short list of the greatest players in New Orleans Saints history. And I don't think that's a hot take. Top 10, easy. Yeah, easily. So sentimentally, it's great to see. Alvin Kamara earned his money. A lot of people would have held out. He showed up. He played high-level football. He's been their best offensive player all season. He earned this deal. It's great to see him get paid. That's awesome. That's the the sentimental part of it. Saints fans should be happy. Alvin Kamara should be happy. Mm -hmm. It's awesome to see a team draft a player, him have an amazing career, and potentially retire with that team. It makes you smile. It's beautiful. But the other angle is you look at the money side of it. You look at the running backs in the league. Christian McCaffrey at the top in millions per year, making $19 million. Second place is Indianapolis Colts running back Jonathan Taylor at 14 mil. Alvin Kamara, t- about just over 12 mil. After that, you've got Saquon Barkley also making about 12 mil. Josh Jacobs with 12. Joe Mixon with about 10. David Montgomery with 9. Ramondre Stevenson with 9. And 30-year-old Derrick Henry making 8 million. Every name that I just said outside of Derrick Henry and AK and no, just Derrick Henry is younger than Alvin Kamara. CMC being 28, he's the closest to Alvin Kamara. But Jonathan Taylor, 25. Saquon Barkley, 26. Josh Jacobs, 26. Joe Mixon, 28. David Montgomery, 27. Ramondre Stevenson, 26. I was looking at a graphic the other day, and it's ironic that this happened afterwards. It was a graphic of the projected cap for next season. And how far each team is under the cap. There are some teams 100 million under the cap. Mm-hmm. Some teams projected to be 70 million under the cap. There was one team that was like 300,000 over the cap, another team that was like 4 mil over the cap. And then you've got the Saints projected to be 80 million dollars over the cap mm-hmm. next season. The Saints are projected to be 80 million dollars over the cap because over the last few years, they've given big money deals to players who are closer to the end of their careers than they are at the beginning. Look at what they did for Cam Jordan, who has not been on the field consistently because you've got Chase Young and you've got Carl Granderson. Mm -hmm. There's been a bit of a regression in his game due to age, which is normal for a player that old. But the Saints gave Cam Jordan a lot of money. You look at Tyron Matthew, another player who's older and got a big money extension recently. You look at the secondary, you know. You, it's, it's good to see a player like Cam Jordan, who was drafted for the Saints and arguably their best pl- defensive player of all time, get a deal to retire with New, uh, in New Orleans. It's good to see the hometown kid, Tyron Matthew, get a deal that could potentially end his career in New Orleans. Great to see Alvin Kamara get paid for all of the things that he's done for this team, potentially retire in New Orleans. But this is why when we get to April mm-hmm. and we're going to be talking about well, the Saints have to clear, uh, you know, $100 million over the next four weeks to try to get under the cap before the NFL draft mm-hmm. so that they can make draft picks and try to bring in free agents and get this team better. This is why, because you make signings like this. And, like, you don't you don't really – like, for instance, in Alvin Kamara's case, Alvin Alvin's fine this year. Alvin, Alvin's still got it. You know, he's capable um, – and, you know, he's been durable, knock on wood. That's a relative term, obviously, because, I mean, a broken hand and a broken rib is certainly not not perfect, ideal situation to play in. And you don't really see it when you just look at it individually, yeah. right? You can make a case Alvin's still got it. But when you put it in the whole picture of a whole and you realize, wow, okay, he's a little past it, he's a little past it, he's a little past, he's a little past. Wow, that's a lot of players. And then you look at the way things have kind of gone in the season where 
you know, I've said this before. Part of the reason why you're getting injured is you've got older players. Yeah. You cannot, you're not allowed, to, I, I don't, you cannot separate age from injury. You cannot separate age from ineffectiveness. If you choose to go this route and you run that and you choose to take that risk, you cannot then back away uh, when the risky part of that, uh, when the, the the bad things about that risk happen to you, you can't necessarily separate yourself from that. So that's really what it boils down to. I, I think Alvin can be an effective player next year. And we'll see what the books are for 2026 because I got a feeling they can probably get out of it after next year. Again, I'll see the fine print on that. But I, I, I just think right now this is exactly the kind of move that while you get caught up sentimentally in the – my favorite player signed with my favorite team, and it's just awesome. Now you're talking about a situation where, when, when, <laughs> if you're in this exact scenario next year on the field, these are the types of things you're going to come back to and say, "Well, did they really need to do that? Did they really need to do that?" It's a risk they run. I will say this because if you look at the books for next year, there's some things that are going to come off that's going to allow them to get uh, to deduct their salary cap overages. Not easy, but. Um, there's a couple of things that are going to come off the books. There's going to be a couple of moves that will get them down. But I feel like we've been saying this for a long time. It's the perpetual cycle of having to constantly restructure deals or extend deals um, with players that may or may not be in the primes of their career. You just hope in this scenario that Alvin can prove you right and he still got it, which is certainly possible. It's certainly possible. But more often, more often than not, we've seen they've done this. I mean, Cam Jordan, I, I mean, I hate to beat up on Cam Jordan, but he's just not the same player right now. We've seen this happen, and they're on the books for him next year with a high cap, cap hit. I mean, and it's going to be a difficult conversation they're going to have to have with him, either taking a pay cut or possibly moving on from him because of the salary cap uh, constraints that's going to force this team. So you're in an interesting spot here. Um, again, Celebrate it. Congratulations, Alvin, because he absolutely deserved it. Yes. He absolutely earned it. He's absolutely still a top, and, I, and I've been critical of him uh, over the last couple of years. I think he's shown this year he's absolutely still in the top 10 in terms of running backs in the league, and he's going to be very soon the best running back in franchise history. I think that's safe to say. And we work with Deuce McAllister. I think even Deuce eventually will, will kind of pass the torch there. But it just comes with risks. Every move does, and it just feels like the same path. They've, they, they haven't really reversed course. Um, and if you've waited this long, um, would it have been a, an easier move to maybe try to do this in the offseason? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But congratulations to Alvin. And I think he could possibly have some success this week because, as we've seen, it was one of the best injury reports we've seen in a long time. I went out to Saints it camp was. today, and, man, there was some there was some good energy out there. And, and and why not? Because there were a lot of players that were back that we hadn't seen in quite some time. And before we get to the injury report, one last thing on Kamara. We talked a lot about Mickey Loomis in the last few podcasts. The reason that you're giving Alvin Kamara this deal is ultimately because the Saints did not do a good job preparing for life after Kamara, if we want to be honest about it. Exactly. You talk, we if you talk, felt confident about Kendra, you you probably wouldn't be making this yeah, deal. Yeah, most teams are not giving big money deals to 30-year-old running backs if they feel like they've got the future in the building. When Alvin Kamara first held out, we talked about, I thought they were going to pay him because I felt like the Saints were not built to succeed without Alvin Kamara in this offense. And you look throughout the years, Alvin Kamara's not Benjamin Button. He gets older every 24 hours, just mm -hmm. like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And as you look throughout the years... The Saints did not do enough or really anything to prepare for a time when Alvin Kamara became too old to give you the production that you would want from him or to prepare for a time where you could avoid maybe giving a guy going on 30 a uh, $24.5 million deal because they drafted Kendra Miller. Kendra Miller hasn't been on the field enough to even prove that you can rely on him to play that Alvin Kamara role. Jamal Williams, you bring him in, he hasn't been what you thought he would be. You pass on a player like Ty J. Spears, Ty J. Spears will never know what he wound up doing in New Orleans as a Saint, but we know what he did at Tulane. So that's part of the reason why you have to sign Kamara. Yeah, and, and look, it would have been very interesting to see. You know, he, he talked about this potentially going on a free agency, going on visits, seeing other teams. He wouldn't have got this on the open market. No, He wouldn't have got two years, $24 million on the open market. So... Interesting. I mean, look, that, that those are all factors everyone has to consider. But for now, 
AK is ready to go, and he's a well, uh, well compensated running back in the NFL. Something a lot of running backs don't get to achieve. So good for him. Yeah, anyway, we let's will get, get to the injury. Report. Yeah, let's get to that injury report. So. It, it looked a lot better. I remember at this mm. time last week, we were sitting and we were just talking about all the names that didn't practice and all of that. Today, only two guys didn't practice on this injury report. Quarterback Derek Carr and offensive lineman Nick Saldaveri. But a lot of guys who had been out were back today in a limited practice. That being offensive lineman Cesar Ruiz, Lucas Patrick, and Connor McGovern. Linebacker Pete Werner back at practice today. Wide receiver Chris mm-hmm. Olave, still I believe he hasn't officially cleared concussion protocol, but mm-hmm. he was back at practice today in a limited capacity. Defensive tackle Colin Saunders, who missed the last game against Denver with a back injury, he's back. Potentially the biggest name of all, Taysom Hill, mm-hmm. back at practice in a limited participation. Running back Alvin Kamara, still dealing with the hand and rib. He was limited at practice today. Cedric Wilson, Jawan Johnson, also limited. Spencer Rattler practiced in full, and Marshawn Lattimore practiced in full today. So the Saints getting a lot healthier going into a Chargers game that when you look at the schedule, they're on a five-game losing streak. If there's any game they would want to be healthy and have all of their guys in, it would be this one. Yeah, and look, I got to tell you, I I alluded to a little earlier, um, there was a different energy today. I mean, we get to see about 20 minutes when we go out there. And it's, it, you, you can't really decipher much. Um, there are a couple things I can see maybe from a from a who's out there and potentially who could be going, who could not be going, and who could be, you know, be on the field for the Saints. But there was definitely a different energy. I, I don't know what it was, and you can definitely see it. I think even DA alluded to it in his press conference. He was asked about it. There was a couple things for that. A, they had the extended break. They looked a little refreshed. Um because it's hard, man, when you're losing and that just negativity rolls into the next week and you get into that cycle after cycle after cycle. I mean, think about it. It's been five straight weeks. It's been a long time since so they, they come in on Monday morning with a victory feeling good. And, and that, that negativity, if you let it, can really impact just body language and just it just becomes really monotonous at that point. It doesn't be, it's not fun. But the mini buy allowed them to kind of reset, refresh, and come that it's, man, it just felt like they didn't come back, and it just felt like there was a, little, a few more smiles on the faces. It felt like there was a little more, just a little more pep in the step um, because of that break in the action, that break in the monotony. And also, I mean, you're going to be happier when your core players are back. And you didn't have Derek Carr today. Um, he was officially a DMP, is that correct? Yes. Um, but you did have Taysom out there. You did have Olave out there. You did have Ruiz out there. You had Pete Werner out there. You had Lucas Patrick out there. Um, so this is why I believe Spencer Rattler, uh, maybe this is the last sort of point on the on the uh, the data sheet or the, the, the sample size. Let's see how he does with at least some of our core guys back. And maybe that's why they're going with him. I, I don't know. Um, you guys know how we feel about that. You agree or disagree. It, just, it is what it is at this point. That's just the way they're going. But to get these guys back, maybe that's why – you haven't seen the the, the quote unquote big move for the big trade. A lot of teams are going to be talking that in the next couple of weeks. He, they were even asked today about them possibly being sellers at the trade deadline. Now look, it's a couple more weeks before that, and if they lose two more games, who knows? Maybe they do. But he said that that's not our intention. Dennis Allen said that, um, and I, I I think in the fan base it's easy to kind of drift, and sometimes with the media too. But the truth of the matter is, there's a, still a ton of football left to play. And they haven't checked out on the season yet, guys. They just haven't. And not only that, I think they truly believe they can come back and, and, and turn this thing around. You know, the entire NFC South lost this yeah. uh, on Sunday or Sunday and Monday. The Bucks mm, played exactly. on Monday. I, I know it's crazy to talk about playoffs, but playoffs are not out of sight yet for the New Orleans Saints. Whether you're talking NFC South, whether you're talking wild card, you're sitting at two and five. They wouldn't be the first two and five team to make the playoffs if they can turn this thing around quickly. And their schedule is definitely built to get this thing turned around. You know, injury wise, you're going to have four of your five day one offensive linemen back if Caesar mm-hmm. Ruiz and Lucas Patrick can come back. Alvin Kamara will be back there with Taysom Hill, your most versatile and arguably dangerous offensive weapon. Taysom, Taysom, Taysom. You've got Rashid Shahid out. You will be missing Carl. You'll be missing Shahid. You'll be missing Eric McCoy. They brought in Marquez Valdez-Scantling, hoping that he can kind of be equivalent or at least 
give you something that Rashid mm-hmm. Shaheed gave you with the the speed that he's got. Spencer Rattler will have a lot more support than he's had in the last two games. Defensively, you're bringing back Pete Werner. You do lose Paulson Adebo, but you plug in the guy you traded up to get in the second round in yeah. Kool-Aid McKinstry. So this team will look a lot better injury-wise, and I'm curious to see if that will translate to them playing better to say, hey, maybe it was injuries all along, or if they will still look bad and you at that point you start saying, it, it, you know, health – Maybe a part of it, but it's not just health. Yeah, you start looking around that organization and saying, "Hey, man, something really may be wrong in here." Well, and I can tell you that the vibe is, and the overwhelming feeling I get is that's what they're banking on. They're banking on a well, clean bill of health. We're going to be better. We're going to be back to closer to the team we were first couple of weeks of the season, and the schedule softens up. I actually think we'll get more into this on Friday, but I actually think the next five games are it. Like that's it. If you can, if you get get three out of the next five. You got a shot. If you have anything less than that, you can probably look forward to next year. Um, I think the Bucks and Falcons are playing each other this week. So you're talking about a situation. Why don't we look that up real quick? I think the Bucks and the Falcons play each other. So if that is indeed the case and the Saints come out, somehow get a win, you're talking about um, someone's going to be uh, – what, what are they right? That is indeed the case. Okay. Falcons and Bucks, both four and three, playing on Sunday. So someone's going to be four and four. Someone's going to be five and three. And if the Saints will win. They'd be three and five. You could do the math. Four and you know five and three, four and four, three and five. You obviously you're not out, completely out of the situation. So there's a lot there, um, and there is um, slight e- reasons for a glimmer of hope for this season. Yeah, you know we'll see what happens, but it all starts Sunday in Los Angeles. The Saints not out of the postseason picture yet. And getting a win against the Chargers will do a lot to help them get in the forefront of that picture. All right, we're running out of time here. For Andre Johnson Jr., I am Sean Fazan. We'll catch you guys next time on Overtime.